Hey everyone, so today we're looking at not one, but two new power banks. Let's go. All right, so these are the Smart Kobe 8000 and 10,000 milliamp hour power banks. So let's get these open, take a look at what's inside. So this here on the left is the 8000 milliamp hour battery version. Uh, it's in a matte black kind of finish. It's got a rubberized finish on all sides. And included in the box is a USB A to C cable, a little pouch to carry your power bank with, and also a leather or maybe leatherette cable holder. So the idea is you can attach this cable holder to the lanyard here via this little hole, and then you can secure your cables by looping it around like this. So you can carry your cables with you along with the power bank. Now on the right is the 10,000 milliamp hour version. So this one's a bit bigger. So let's get this one open. So this one comes in a white color uh, there's also a navy color as well. This one, it has the rubberized material on the top and the bottom. And in the middle is like a metallic looking plastic strip. It's reflective, looks pretty good. And this one is a little bit heavier. Now the weight is 137 grams for the 8,000 milliamp hour battery one on the left. And the larger white one here, the 10,000 milliamp hour battery one, is 176 grams, so just only a little bit heavier uh, for a bit more uh, battery capacity here. Now, they're telling us that it is the smallest and lightest power bank for their capacity. And judging by the weight in my hand, I tend to agree with them. This is actually really light uh, and it's really small. They say it's credit card sized uh, and it is pretty close to a credit card you know, profile, at least this, this way. Uh, it is a bit thicker, of course, but it is actually very light. You could keep this in your pocket and not have any issues with it. Now, they achieve this, you know, smallest and lightest power bank by using NMC batteries. So NMC batteries are typically found in EVs. So they used similar batteries as EVs to achieve this small and light form factor. Now, what's more surprising is in the box of the 10,000 milliamp hour battery um, power bank is just a cable, a pouch, and there is no leather strap, which is a little bit surprising considering that this is supposed to be the more powerful uh, power bank. So let's continue taking a tour around these two power banks, starting with the 8,000 milliamp hour battery one. So this one has a little lanyard on the top left edge, and it's got a little, I guess, uh, you can replace this with whatever lanyard you want, but it comes with one anyway. The ports are on the top, you come, it comes with the standard USB-A, uh, it comes with USB-C, which is excellent. Now what's surprising to me is it also comes with lightning. So this is probably the first power bank I've ever seen that has a lightning port uh, as well. So if you are an iOS user uh, or an iPhone user actually, then you can actually use your lightning cable to charge this power brick. So on the left edge are some LEDs. So there is a power button on the opposing, on the opposite end. If I press this power button, the LEDs light up, so that indicates how much charge you have. So four LEDs, four meaning it's fully charged right now. Now, as you charge the power bank, uh, there will be a blinking LED to indicate how full it is as well. And it supports the full uh, quick charging four as well, and it has uh, power delivery. So this can potentially charge your computer as well. So let's take a look at the 10,000 milliamp hour version on the right. Now it has two USB-A ports and it has a USB-C. Uh, again, what's surprising is this doesn't have the lightning. It has a micro USB port instead. So I mentioned quick charge and power delivery before. So both these power banks support power delivery and quick charge. So you can charge most mobile devices at full speed via the USB-C port. And I guess that's an important um, thing to note. The quick charge and the power delivery only works from the USB-C port. Uh, if you try and 
charge a device such, such as a quick charge enabled phone or tablet via the USB-A port, it won't be charging as fast as outputting from the USB-C port. Now, besides supporting quick charge output, both devices support quick charge input. So what does that mean? You can quick charge or power, using power delivery, uh, quickly charge both these uh, power banks as well. So it supports output and input. So if you have a quick charge or power delivery enabled power adapter, you can quickly charge both these power banks as well. Now charging the power banks, it only takes input from the USB-C port or the micro USB port for the larger one. Uh, for the smaller one, it can take input so you can charge this via the USB-C port or via the lightning port uh, on the smaller one. The USB-A ports are for output only. Another super important spec that most people or most power bank companies don't tell you is whether or not it supports pass-through charging. Now, what is pass-through charging? It just means, can you use this power bank to charge your device while the power bank itself is charging? And the answer for the Smart Kobe is yes for both. So while you are charging the power bank through the USB-C port or the Lightning port, you can actually charge your phone using the USB-A port or a tablet or something. So you can charge another device while this is charging as well. Okay, so just to drive home how small and light these two Smart Kobe power banks are, I have some other power banks just to compare with. So the first one is a Xiaomi power bank. It's a little older, but it's 16,000 milliamp hours. That's the capacity of this power bank. Now, these two combined is slightly more than this, so it should technically be heavier. Um, just judging it, you know, in my hand, they feel about the same weight. So it's definitely living up to the compact nature um, that Smart Kobe is selling here on the side. Now, next we have the 70 My power bank. This one is quite a bit bigger. And looking at the back here, it says it has 11,100 milliamp hours. So this is quite comparable to the 10,000 milliamp hour Smart Kobe, this white one here. And look at that size difference. The capacity is, you know, fairly similar between these two, but it, this one is just absolutely massive. Now it's not a completely fair comparison because this one has a jumper kind of functionality. So you could technically jump start your car with this power bank and you can't really do that with this. So there might be some additional electronics in here that make it a bit bigger, but capacity wise, this thing is way more power dense than the 70 my one here. Now, finally, this is my go-to power bank that I carry with me. This is the anchor. Let's see how large this one is. It is, where is it? Oh, here it is. It's the Anker PowerCore Plus. It's 26,800 milliamp hours. You might not be able to read that. And it supports power delivery as well. So this is like the beast of the Anker power bank. So this is the one I carry with me if I go, you know, traveling for an extended period. And this thing can charge my laptops and, and cameras and stuff. Now this one only has two USB-A ports and has USB-C. Um, and I've noticed that it doesn't actually support pass-through charging. So that's a disappointment for this Anker one. And these smaller Smart Kobe ones do. All right, so specs and size comparison aside, do they actually charge you know, phones and tablets and stuff? So let's start with the 8,000 milliamp hour battery on the left. Let's grab a USB-C cable. We'll plug it into the USB-C port here. Let's move it across a little bit. And I have a phone. This is a Pixel 5. Let's see what happens when we plug this in. So on the bottom here, it says charging rapidly. So there we go. So it can do rapid charging, which is excellent. Now I've noticed that when it's doing rapid charging, the LED actually goes green. So that LED, that green LED, means it is doing rapid charging or quick charging at the moment from this power bank, which is pretty cool. Now I mentioned earlier that only the USB-C port supports quick charge. So what happens when you use a regular USB-A port to charge a phone. So let's do that now. I've just plugged that in. Now it says charging. So as you can see here, this is plugged into the USB-A port only on the 8,000 milliamp hour version. It's not doing quick charging, it's just doing regular charging. And also if you look at the LEDs on the side, they're all white. It means the power bank knows it's only doing regular charging and not the quick charge that it's capable of. Next, let's demonstrate pass-through charging. So again, we're gonna, we're gonna use the white 10,000 milliamp hour uh, power bank from Smart Kobe. And this is a USB-C cable that's plugged into a charger. Uh, and we're gonna plug it into this USB-C port. And as you can see, 
it's blinking, the LED is blinking, that means it is being charged. And you see there's a green LED, that means it is being quick charged. So this power brick that's connected to the wall uh, supports quick charge. Now, if I grab a USB-A cable and plug it into one of the ports here on the top, yeah, this way. So now this is plugged into the power bank. I'm gonna grab a phone. And as you can see, it is still charging. The LEDs are still blinking here. If I plug this into my phone, the phone also says charging and the power bank is still blinking. So the power bank itself is charging. It's not doing quick charge anymore because it can't do pass through with quick charge, but both the phone and the power bank is being charged at the same time, which is really useful if you only have one power adapter with you. All right, so charging phones are easy. We know power banks can charge phones, no problems. Now, can this thing charge a tablet? So this is a tiny credit card sized power bank. So let's see if we can get a full-size tablet to charge from this power bank. So again, USB-C cable. We have an iPad Pro. We're gonna plug it in. And boom, it is charging. So that's pretty good. So this tiny power bank, that's credit card size from Smart Kobe, 8,000 milliamp hour one, can charge a full-size iPad. All right, so this is the ultimate test. We're gonna see if you can charge a MacBook Pro using the 8,000 milliamp hour Smart Kobe power bank here. Now, just some stats here. I put up the system information and then the battery section, power battery section. So first up, the battery is installed, obviously. Now you can see up here, the full charge is 4,803 milliamp hours. Now the charge remaining is 2,097. So we're roughly at 50, you know, just below 50% for this MacBook. So it's not fully charged. It's actually gonna draw some power when we plug it in. Now down here, you can see that it is not connected to the AC adapter at the moment and is not charging. So again, I'm gonna grab this USB-C cable and we're gonna plug it into the USB-C port down here. So that's plugged in. And yes, this is the full cable. Oops, as you can see, it is a really short cable, but it is the cable. I'm not trying to plug in a different adapter here. So I'm gonna plug this onto the side of the MacBook. I hope you guys can see that. And it is now plugged in. And I heard a charging sound. Let's give it a couple of seconds to see if this changes. I believe I have to refresh this. Okay, so I just refresh the page. And there it is, AC is connected and it is charging, yes, and it is charging at 18 watts. So that's the full capacity available from this 8,000 milliamp hour power bank. So let's try the same thing, uh, but with the larger 10,000 one. So I'm gonna unplug the smaller one here and refresh this page. And you can see that it is no longer connected and it still says charging, I don't know why. Okay, and now it says it is no longer charging. So now we're gonna plug in the larger 10,000 milliamp hour. So there's the charging sound. Again, we've got to refresh this page. Scroll down, refresh it again just in case. So yes, there it is, it is connected, it is charging. So yes, both these power banks can charge a MacBook Pro. A little bit slower, but it can do it. All right, so I think that's about it for this video. I think Smart Kobe did a really good job on both these power banks. They're definitely light and small, and they're actually very compact and power dense. So I actually think I'll be swapping out my Anchor One in the back there for this white Smart Kobe 10,000 milliamp hour battery pack. It has all the ports I need. It has the USB-A ports at the top, a micro USB and a USB-C. Now, if you are choosing between the two capacities, you have to be aware that they've made different design choices for the two capacities. First up is that this Smaller one is rubberized plastic all the way around, which I actually prefer. I'm not a big fan of this chrome finish, but that's okay, it's just a power bank. Uh, another thing you have to be aware of is that the small one has a lightning port on the left here, which the large one doesn't have. The large one has a micro USB port instead. So if you are primarily an iPhone user, uh, you might wanna choose the smaller 8,000 milliamp hour capacity version. So that's about it. Uh, I hope this was useful and thanks for watching.